I can't stand intros. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day wherever you might be. I'm back with another one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, today I'm going to be doing the one-on-one -on -one with the Cold Steel AD10. And um, some of you might be thinking, well, why am I not doing a one-on-one -on -one with something like this? Perhaps this, this case Sodbuster. This one might be a nice little one-on-one. -on -one. Well, as much as I want to, and as much as I may in the future, the one-on-one uh, -on -one series is relatively new. I think uh, this will be my third video in. And um, yeah, it's just a, another series of videos that I do uh, in the woods, out of the woods, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and um, I think there's some other series that I do. Uh, the, the music videos are not doing so good. I, <laughs> I don't know what to say. It is what it is. Uh, I thought I would just be a music channel, but it turns out I'm turning into a, a knife channel again. But I do like them, so today I'm going to talk about the AD-10 by Cold Steel. A couple of recaps. Uh, go back to the one-on-one -on -one with the Espada. I have made some mods, as I did say I was going to do. I have uh, softened the corner, corners on the lock so it's not sharp and digging into my, uh, my thumb. I've taken it apart and I've softened the spring that's on the lock so I had a hard time closing it before in this position. I had to kind of do this to get any good strong leverage in this area. Um, not anymore. I have smoothed it out. It is now a joy, a pleasure, and an honor to be fidgeting with the Cold Steel Large Spada. Love it. And yeah, it's just razor sharp. And that's the XHP. So go back to that video if you like. The first, I think that might have been the first one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the second one-on-one, -on -one, this is a recap on this uh, Benchmade bailout, and um, I, I, it's it's in my pocket uh, daily. I don't even know it's there most of the time. It's so light and so thin, so sharp. I did uh, do a video um, of me sharpening this knife, and I'm sorry I did delete it. Um, my music videos, I, I they're just not. No one really cares, so. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll maybe just do a separate videos for my music. Um, I won't incorporate the knives with my music. I'll just do a separate, uh, you know, music video, kind of more artsy, and I'll leave the knives out of it. Um, but anyway, um, since I've sharpened it on the uh, Edge Pro and uh, kind of just evened out the grind uh, and, and just so smooth it's kind of hard to do on this angle sorry there we go now it's now it's getting hung up a little bit at the top it was free dropping before it's kind of like that love it um yeah it, all the little things i wasn't used to at the making of the one-on-one -on -one of this knife i'm now used to everything on this knife it is not pinching me anymore in here. It was just me getting used to it. Uh, that's basically what it came down to. So I, I really don't have any major issues with this knife. I really do enjoy it. So that's a quick recap. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes here of why you came. And uh, let's do a one-on-one -on -one with this absolutely amazing knife. All right. Um, yes. I'll get, I'm going to talk about the knife. It's not a review. It's just me talking about the knife. And that's that's it. That's all these one-on-ones are. And I'm going to start off by saying that... This thing is freaking amazing, okay? Um, I wish everyone could just feel what I just did there. It is absolutely so smooth. It's like... I, I can't explain how smooth that is. Now, my disclaimer is, is that it... Most of these knives don't come that way. I've taken everything apart, apart, and I I smooth them out my own way. And this one took to it 
so well. Some don't. Some, you can do everything you want to these knives and sometimes they just never come out the way you want. This one, wow. It, it, so, it cooperated in every possible way. It took the edge that I gave it and I, I can't stress, I can't stress how, how sticky that edge is. And it just, it just loves it. And that's the S35 VN, I believe. Right? Yeah, they did a great job with this steel. Uh, the jimping, absolutely perfect. There, I, I haven't got anything um, the bad to say here. The hollow grind, this is the first gen, I'll call it the first gen because now that they are coming with a flat or a high flat, this has got the, uh, the hollow. And I am really glad that I have this model because it slices like nobody's business. And I do have a lot of, of cold steels and you're gonna see them coming up in future videos where they have the uh, flat. Smooth, oh man, just no wrist. Don't need the wrist, just wow. Uh, I'm gonna go straight into the other thing that I did was I softened the um, spring a little bit, just a little bit. And I had some stick at the very beginning. It was kind of a kind of a funny thing. Right now, you hear that little. That is perfectly acceptable. Uh, there was something else. Uh, obviously, I can't show you because it's gone. But right now, it's perfect. So I did a little bit of work on the lock, just very minor, just to give it that super, super smoothness. Uh, the pocket clip, yeah, I don't know. I don't really, it doesn't bother me. I, it would I would love to see someone do a, a custom kind of pocket clip for this. So, but anyway, that is a minor detail for me. I did raise up the, uh, I put it in the vise. I took the pocket clip off. I just raised that just a little bit so that it's easier to get into the pants. And the G10 is not aggressive, so it's not an issue. I'm gonna show you the big problem that I had. I'm gonna use, uh, I'll use this tough glide as a pointer. It was these three screws here. So we're on the show side. Okay, so you can see that I, I took a Swiss Army knife and um, I kind of countersunk this G10 down a little bit farther here and here. And this is the way it came here. So when I took the knife apart, I couldn't get these two screws back in. They wouldn't bite into the aluminum. So I had to countersink just a little bit. And you can see that in relation to the, the aluminum, the tops of the heads are all the same. The only thing that changes is the contour of the G10. So I had to make that change. And uh, I don't know if the newer models have addressed this issue. And uh, you can see here that this is original as well. But you see the G10 is very thin here. So it's easy to bite. But once the G10 gets thicker, and the screws are all the exact same length, uh, I didn't get any bite here. But anyway, I dressed that and I fixed that. And uh, I'm glad I did. I did bring it to people's attention. I don't know if anybody actually watched those videos, but um, I do like this. It's kind of like a glass breaker. I did say in this video that this was the only knife that I own with a glass breaker. Uh, it turns out that the uh, 8010, I don't know if this is actually designed as one, but I think you could definitely use it as one. I think it would probably work. So, uh, man, I just, I just, I really dig this thing. This is so smooth, so smooth. And, um, you know, the, the forward choil is a forward choil. There's enough room for me. Man, I do like a bigger knife. This one is, 
Definitely not the biggest knife in my collection, but it's, uh, <laughs> it is so smooth. You know? Yeah. Uh, I really don't have any big negatives here. I, I did mention also in the past, because it's got aluminum frame, will it hold up to that heavy, heavy, hard use like the 4MAX or the SR1 when they're out in the woods? I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna actually uh, beat on this one the way I beat on those other knives. Uh, just because it's just, I don't know, it's so cool. And I, I just don't wanna take the chance, especially with a, uh, uh, with a hollow grind. So uh, I probably won't take this one out into the woods, but I just wanted to share this one with you out of the collection, one-on-one -on -one with the Cold Steel AD10. It's a beaut. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.